that was one of my favorites because uh, Ron O'Neill, who had played Superfly, uh, was an icon in the black community. And he hadn't worked in a while. And I wanted him uh, in this piece. And um, that was a great pleasure for me to work with people as, that I had admired uh, over the years. Dizzy, Pam Greer, we brought her back. She had not worked in film or television for a few years. She had recovered from cancer and had pretty much given up. And I brought her out of retirement. She'll tell anybody that. But anyway, um, Frank joins the club. One of the finest lines I had in that script, uh, Hugh Wilson got from me because we had had this conversation. And the line was, Ron O'Neill was trying to get me to join this upper class black club that only took light skinned blacks, wouldn't take dark skinned blacks. This was the first time in in television that the color line among black people was discussed. This is before Spike Lee's movie. This is before all of that. So the, the story was they wanted me to join this club because they wanted to bring a black, darker skinned person into this club. I would be the first one. And my line to him was when I turned him down, I said, I was, which was true. I've been the first black in this company. I've been the first black to do that. I'd be damned if I'm going to be the first black in an all black club. And that, <laughs> that's one of my favorite lines. <laughs> I'd be damned if I'm going to be the first black in an all black club. But it was thing based on something that certainly I knew about in my community, the brown paper bag test. Uh, they would not take you or treat you a certain way if you were darker than a brown paper bag. And a lot of people didn't want that being told. And we got uh, a few uh, negative responses from people. But Another thing in my life that I'll never forget, I got a fan letter from a woman out of Michigan. I will never forget it. And as it was handwritten, three pages handwritten uh, and, and with a fountain pen so that the ink was dissolvable. And as I was reading this letter, about the third page, just before, beginning on the second page, the end of the second page, beginning, there were, there were watermarks. Uh, the ink had been splattered and there were drips. And then the third page, when I finished, I realized that she was crying when she wrote it. Tears began to fall from her eyes onto this piece of paper. And basically what she said, she was from New Orleans, and she came from a well-to-do, upper-middle-class uh, Black family. And she had fallen in love with a dark-skinned man. It was the love of her life. And wanted to marry him. He wanted to marry And her family fought her tooth and nail and did everything and destroyed this relationship. And she left New Orleans and moved to Michigan, married someone, and that person had died. And But in her mind, the love of her life, she had pushed way back. And she saw this episode and wrote me and told, told me how happy she had felt. It relived and relived a, a part of her life that she had hidden. And that it ended by her saying, this is where the tears were, she often wondered what her life would have been like had she married, I forgot the man's name. And when I saw that, I mean, I, I just, it just, it touched me deeply. And again, the power of television, the power of images to soothe, to heal, to, to anger. It's a very powerful medium. As uh, the late, great William Paley said to me, what is our propaganda? Right now, we see the propaganda are in hands of people who are using it for their own purposes, and it's it's tearing this country apart. We need more storytellers who have a, a, a different purpose. I don't mean good or bad, just a more humane purpose. 